house of God. My first time in 2023. I missed y'all Sunday. I'd just like to say 2023 is going to be so much better already. I don't know about you, but 2023 already feels so much better. And with that, let's get into the word, Matthew 3 and 11. And when you get there, say amen. speaking in Matthew, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'd like to minister to you tonight just for a little bit. It's nothing elaborate. It's nothing special, nothing big. I don't have eloquent words for you tonight, but I'd like to minister to you on the simple thought or the simple statement, a desire for fire. A desire for fire. How many know that's what we need in the world today is the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn abroad and just spread like wildfire and just start to catch on everybody? That's what we need. I have a desire for fire. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you would move in this place, oh Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint my lips, Lord, and that you would speak your word through me, oh God, as I have received it from you. Lord, and I pray, oh God, that you would move in a mighty way, oh Lord. I pray, oh God, that your angels would begin to minister in this place. Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for this new year, and we thank you for the promises and the blessings and the things that we're about to find and discover in this new year, oh God. We thank you for for every promise fulfilled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you may be seated. Now, every one of us in here have received the Holy Ghost, if I'm not mistaken. At least everybody who's at least old enough to receive the Holy Ghost has had it before. So you understand what it means when it says with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jeremiah even said, before the Holy Ghost was even given, he said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. He was talking about the Word of God. It's like a fire shut up in my bones and I can't contain it. So we know what that fire feels like. In Acts 2, 1 through 4, and it says, On that day of Pentecost was fully come. We all know this one. They were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Where's the fire at, church? Pastor was trying to push us into a different dimension. Where's the fire at? Where's our desire for fire? Have we lost our desire for that fire? And then verse 4, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I have a desire for fire. And there's a story back in the Old Testament before the Holy Ghost was ever given. And there's these three young guys. And man, I I don't know how else to put it, but they just really, really desired that fire. And Daniel chapter 3, verse 4 through 6, it said, Then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at the time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And, also, and whoso falleth not down worship, and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. 
And if any of us attended Sunday school in any of our younger years, we know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that wasn't their actual names. It was Hananiah, something else, and Azariah. That was their Hebrew names. That was the Babylonian names gave to them. But these three young Hebrew men, they found themselves walking about, and then the music started playing, and everybody around them dropped to their face and began to worship this golden image. And they decided, you know what? That fiery furnace sounds okay right about now. I mean, come on, man. It's a fiery furnace. It's burning up. And so they refused to drop down and worship that idol. Because in them they knew that that was nothing. There was nothing behind that idol. There was no God behind that idol. There was a spirit and there was a demon that was trying to cause them to worship Him. But there's nothing that that idol can do for me. They, they, they was in their mind, they already knew, there's nothing that that idol can do for me. Why would I mess up my relationship with my God for an idol? And so, we all know people who like to snitch. If you grew up with siblings, and you can deny it all you want to, there had to be some kind of altercation at some point. And I am really loud up here. I don't know why you said you was quiet. Praise God. <laughs> but growing up, if you had siblings, you know there was an altercation. And sometimes maybe if you were the oldest sibling, I'm speaking from experience, and your little sibling decided they wanted to start something, maybe they didn't have the power to finish it. And maybe you was just a little too rough. Praise God. And you smack them and, oh, and they start crying, oh, oh, it's okay. I, I didn't mean to hit you that hard. Don't tell mom. Don't tell dad. Don't, don't tell nobody. But they snitched anyway. What's that saying? Snitches get stitches and wind up in ditches. I'm not, I'm not condoning violence tonight. Praise God. It's, it's okay to laugh in the house of God and have a good time. Amen. And so, now these snitches decide, you know what? I saw them. They didn't bow. They didn't fall down. They didn't worship. I'm going to tell the king. And they're going to get thrown in that fire. And so they go and they tell the king. And the king got angry. Had them brought before him, and he gives them another chance. He said, Okay. He said, I don't know if maybe, he said, I know you guys. He said, I, I'm, I kind of had y'all in my court before. Y'all are kind of familiar. He said, So I'm going to give you a second chance. I kind of, I like you guys. I even like your friend Daniel. So I'm going to give you a second chance. And so he says, I don't know. I never asked, Can y'all hear? Are y'all deaf? He said, because the music was playing, y'all didn't fall down. And so now, he says, now when the music plays again, he said, fall down and worship that image. And the music plays and they refuse again. I don't know about you, but it sounds like they were a little bit hard-headed. And sometimes a little bit of hard-headedness against the world is a good thing. Sometimes that little bit of determination is a good thing. They may have been determined, they may have been hard-headed, or maybe they just really, really wanted to feel what some fire felt like. I mean, after all, they'd already heard the stories of the burning bush that was burning but not consumed. They'd heard about Moses. They'd already heard it be taught that your God is an all-consuming fire. And So now they're thinking, you know what? Maybe it's time we try us a little bit of this fire. Maybe it's time we should see about this fire ourselves. Yeah, Father Abraham, he built plenty of altars. And you know, on altars there's fire for sacrifice. And he knew all about the fire. He said, they said, but let's find out about this fire for ourselves. 
And so they refused to worship the idol, and Nebuchadnezzar's anger just hit 100 degrees. This dude's burning up. He's mad. He's probably as hot as that fire is. And he says, you know what? Make it seven times hotter than it has ever been. And Now throw them in that fire. And this would be that part of the story. Well, this is where the story of our heroes end. But no, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into that fire. And as they were watching, waiting for them to be consumed by the fire and fall and disintegrate or whatever, because the, even the two guys that threw them in the fire died. So as Nebuchadnezzar's watching... I can imagine he's kind of sweating. You know, it's getting hot in the room. He's watching the furnace. And he's just waiting to see what happens. And as he's watching, he sees the three young Hebrew guys walking around. But the thing, their bondage that was on their hands and their feet is now gone. It burnt up. Ain't that amazing? They got thrown in the fire. They weren't burnt, but their bondage was burnt up. Oh, come on. That, that one was a good one. They were thrown in the fire, and the fire couldn't touch them or their person, but it destroyed the thing that bound them up. Hallelujah. And Nebuchadnezzar, as he's watching this fire, he's, he sees this fourth guy appear. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is a heathen king. He doesn't believe in our God. He doesn't believe in, you know, the Hebrew God. He, he worships all the other gods that they have, the Chaldeans' gods. And so he sees his fourth man and he says, How many guys did we throw in there? We threw in three, sir. Okay, I see the three young guys. He said, But there's one in there and he looks like the Son of God. How did he know what the Son of God looked like? How did he know that that was God in Christ right there in flesh? Not flesh yet, but he was manifest in that fire with those three young Hebrew boys. There was something about that fourth man in the fire. And he said, there's something about him. He's like as the Son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar cries out. He says, boys. Are you okay? Yeah, we're good. All good in here. Ain't it hot down there? Nah, it's great. This fire feels awesome. Now, now I know what Moses was talking about with that burning bush. And now I know what they were saying. Our God's an all-consuming fire. He, they said, we're surrounded by fire. And it's burning up everything around us. But we're standing in the fire. They had a desire for that fire. And so they pulled them out of the fire. Not a hair. Not a piece of clothing. Not a fingernail. Not a shoelace. They didn't even smell like smoke. There's something that happens in our life when we introduce fire into our situation. Whenever we build that altar and we allow ourselves to be put through the fire, there's something that happens to us. Ask a blacksmith whenever he's building a weapon or he's building something, he'll stick it into the furnace and he'll let it heat up till it's red hot and then he'll pull it out and he'll bend it and mold it into what it needs to be. But not only is it now bendable, not only can he form it now, but it purifies the thing he put in the fire. In forests, they have these things called controlled burn. Because when you go and you burn out all the underbrush, it purifies the soil. When they're creating gold bars, 
bars of pure gold, they melt the gold down with fire. And it comes out purer and shinier and prettier than it ever was before. Gee, I think there's something to that fire. I think there's something to that fire. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego already understood that we serve the God that is an all-consuming fire. So you can throw me in whatever fire you want. You can put me through whatever you want to. You can turn it as hot as you want to. It ain't going to matter. My God is the God of fire. What the enemy meant for your destruction, God will turn around for your good. They had a desire for fire. They had already heard the stories of old father Abraham and his altars and the fire and the sacrifice and the story of Isaac Isaac and him going up to the mountain and getting ready to put his son on that altar and burn him and kill him as a sacrifice unto God. They'd heard that story and they already knew, you know what? God will provide himself a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Leviticus 6.13 says, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. And what you got to understand is this is talking in the holies of holies in the tabernacle of the tabernacle plan when they were out in the wilderness and traveling. They would have these priests that would go in and check this fire. And they would keep up the fire. And they would make sure that that fire never went out. So I ask us today, as we are the tabernacles of the living God, is our fire burning? Or do we let the flame flicker out and we take off our Holy Ghost just for a little bit and we begin to walk around in some carnality and some flesh? I'm guilty. Who's keeping our fire? The fire on our altar was never, ever meant to go out. And what that, what I take that to mean and what it hit me to mean was that we should always be ready, as Romans says, to present ourselves a living sacrifice. Put ourselves on that altar and be able and be willing to offer a burnt offering unto God. God, I'll put my dreams in the fire on the altar. I'll put my goals in the fire on the altar. I'll put my life in the fire in the altar. I'll put my career on the fire on the altar. I'll put my ambition on the fire on the altar. I'll put everything that is mine on that altar. Whatever it takes to keep the fire burning. God, I will give you whatever it takes to keep my fire burning. Church, we need the fire of God in our lives. We need the fire of God in our lives. I wish somebody would hear me. It's important, it is important that we not let our fire go out. Does anybody remember when they were first filled with the Holy Ghost? That fire, that unction on the inside of you, it almost was like you couldn't sit still because you had to do something. I can reach the world, I'm going to go out and I'm going to save the world. It don't matter what devil tries to stop me. God's on my side. I've got fire in me. i got fire shut up in my bones. Do we remember the fire? Hallelujah. Sometimes we end up like Naab and Abihu in Leviticus 10. The Bible says Naab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, 
took either of them his censer. They were working as priests in the tabernacle. And they put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. We've got to be careful, church, that we don't mistake God's anointing for yelling and screaming and getting loud. If you want to know, ask Elijah. Where, he, where did he hear God's voice? It wasn't in the thunder. It wasn't in the storm. He didn't hear it in the claps of lightning. It was the still, small voice. And see, there's so many people out there that mistake a human fire for God's fire. And so there's people that believe that if they don't sweat through their clothes while they're preaching, they haven't preached it hard enough. And there's people who think that if they don't yell loud enough and their voice doesn't go out while they're preaching, they haven't preached hard enough yet. I'll be honest with you, I grew up across the border from here, I won't say the name, but I remember going to youth camps, camp meetings, youth rallies, and there would be women walk into that church house with their hair stacked this high. And they would have a million bobby pins stuck in that hair. Some even had two liter Coke bottles. It's the truth. And now I've seen these people come in here with these way out wacky hairdos and with all the bands and the bobby pins that they had in their hair and their only objective was to shake every last one of them out of their head. Because they had believed that they had not been touched by God unless they lost every bobby pin. And that sounds silly. That sounds crazy. What does bobby pins have to do with fire? And what does that have to do with the Spirit of God? They used to stay, they'd stack their hair higher so they could be closer to Him. Are we offering God strange fire? Oh, come on. Are we offering God strange fire? Are we burning stuff on our altars that should not be offered unto God? What's burning on our altar? What have we sacrificed to God lately? What have we fed as fuel to that fire? Are we feeding too much distraction to our fire? Are we feeding too much man anointing to our fire? That's dangerous. Continuing in Leviticus 10 and 2, and it says, And there went out fire from the Lord. See, they were, they were working as priests. They were supposed to be tending to the fire of the Lord. But instead, they were burning strange fire. And it says, and the fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. It's important what we're offering to God in our fires, church. Are we following after and desiring after a strange fire? Because if we desire and we follow after a strange fire for too long, That God that is an all-consuming fire will send fire and it will destroy us. See, there's a reason why the word manipulate starts with M-A-N. Because God's not going to manipulate you. 
but man will. Man will put on a show so he can manipulate a reaction out of a congregation. Man will put on a show and will dance and do whatever it takes to get a reaction out of somebody. You don't believe me? Ask Hollywood. And so now we have people who we call anointed. I saw a video the other day and it was, it was some Christmas song that was going on and it was said, but with a little anointing. And it was this lady and she was singing all kinds of crazy up and down and just singing as high as she could. She sounded like she was screaming and maybe possibly dying. What have we mistaken for anointing? Are we moved by the anointing of God or are we moved by the performance of the platform? See, I remember those bobby pins and I remember the preachers that had to sweat through their clothes. But you know what else I remember? I remember prayer meetings that lasted all night long. I remember as a child watching this stuff happen. And it wasn't about performance on a platform. It was about finding God and getting connected to God and linking up and saying, I need your fire in my life. We've got to be careful that we don't desire after man's anointing and after a performance and after somebody who can make us feel good and someone who speaks just the right words to make our conviction go away. But we've got to desire the fire from God. Fire doesn't tickle. It burns. So maybe if we go to church all the time and something doesn't burn us or sting us a little bit, fire burns. He's an all-consuming fire. The Bible says, let the word offend. Amen. And though he is a God and he's a consuming fire, he is a gentleman. He is kind. He is loving. But he's also jealous. He's also jealous. He desires for our desire to be Him. He wants us to desire His Spirit. He wants us to desire His Word. He wants us to des not desire His anointing. Because without Him, nothing, nothing else matters. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15 says, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide in the fire which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. But if a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet is so by fire. There's some significance to fire, church. And we've got to make sure that we don't lack the fire necessary to serve God. Because just like Romans says, we've got to present ourselves a living sacrifice. That means that we don't lay on the altar and die and be consumed by fire, but we live on the altar and we live as a sacrifice. 
in fire. And I'm going to come to a close if we could all stand right now. Praise God. But see, just like those three little Hebrew boys that were thrown into that fire, when we go through the fire, we will not be alone. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Church, our God will never leave us nor forsake us. He won't abandon us. He won't betray us. He can't fail us. So we've got to be willing to lay ourselves on an altar and let fire come from the Lord and consume us as a sacrifice unto God. We must be willing to sacrifice our goals, our ambitions, and what we see ourselves doing for His will and His purpose and His doing. There's a fire coming to Lot Road Church of Pentecost. There's a fire coming. It's already started. And there's harvest. And there's going to be people that come in. And they don't need me. And they don't need you specifically they need God they need Jesus but if we fail to present ourselves as a living sacrifice will there be enough Jesus in us for them to see him will there be enough God in us for them to see him and connect to him because Whenever they first come in, they, they've never had the Holy Ghost. They've never done this. They don't know what's going on. And it's up to us to show them. Are we going to be a church that's on fire? Are we going to be a church that offers strange fire? No. got to make up in our minds today church that we have a desire for the fire of God for that fire that once was set on the inside of us that made us want to shout and made us want to dance and made us want to go crazy in the presence of God we've got to decide that we have a desire for that fire again shouldn't have to push through on the last song of worship service because we haven't gotten to where we need to be yet. We need a desire for fire. We need a desire for fire. And God is here tonight and He is willing and He is able to set our life aflame again and let us be purified by His fire again and let us be consumed by His fire again. There's another opportunity to lay ourselves at an altar and be consumed by the fire of the Lord. Not just dabbled, not just touched, I don't want a first degree burn. I don't want a second degree burn. I want, I want to be consumed. We need to be consumed with fire. These altars are open. And again, it's a chance 